Welcome to the American College of Cardiology's Conversation with Experts. Now in this segment, we're gonna be looking at the latest science that has come out of the Heart Failure Society of America's 2013 Annual Scientific Session. We're glad to have you with me. I'm Dr. Randy Martin, and I'm joined by a great panel of distinguished experts. I'll start to my immediate left is Dr. Claude Yancey. Claude is the Chief of Cardiology at Northwestern University, the Feinberg School of Medicine. Good to see you, Claude. Good Thanks to see so you, much. Randy. Next to Claude is Dr. Marielle uh, Jessup. Marielle is Professor of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania in the Heart and Vascular Center. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to have you with us. And Dr. Jim Januzzi. Jim is Professor of Medicine at the Harvard Medical School and Director of the Cardiac Care Unit at the Mass General Hospital. Jim, good to see you. you guys, Thanks for having me. You guys look great, and we're glad to, glad to be together. Clyde, let me start with you. Yesterday, I think you chaired a session or moderated a session on heart failure readmission. I had a great title, Appropriate Focus or Misguided Efforts. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. Well, thanks for raising the question because it really is an important consideration. You know, what's interesting is that we've got about four years of history now with this whole focus on reducing readmissions. It really came out of the Accountable Care Act deliberations. Right. And the intent has overtly been to reduce costs, to save money. Let's just put that on the table. Sure. So over the four years, we've been able to get over the shock and get over the, <laughs> the questions about why it's there. And if we've been able to start delving into the biology of the metric, that is, why is it there, what do we intend to accomplish, and we've been able to kind of backfill it with what's most important, what are the consequences for the patient. So we've had an array of investigators really bring focus to give us clarity on the metric, its strengths and weaknesses. So here is the super short version. Yes, it is an appropriate measure. We really should be cost sensitive. We should find ways to reduce avoidable readmissions, okay. and that's the key consideration. Too many efforts today are globally focused on heart failure readmissions, and let's face it, this is a tough disease, people are ill, and many times they need to be back in the hospital, and when you keep someone out of the hospital that needs to be there, unfortunately, very bad outcomes can occur. So the first part of the question, yes, it is an appropriate measure, but it is an imperfect deployment of the measure. That is, there's nothing physiologic about 30 days, there are unforeseen consequences, there is the potential for harm, and then moving that needle is hard. It is really, really hard. There are many efforts in the global healthcare space sure. intended to reduce readmissions, but very few of those efforts really have an evidence base. And one of the opportunities that three of us had was to work on the Guideline Writing Committee for Heart Failure and review the available evidence. and. Remarkably, remarkably, we were able to distill it into a very finite list of individual initiatives with at least some evidence base that they would make some difference on the metrics. So very quickly, it's coming back to see a provider within seven days. Let it's me, going to a multi Let me do center. this. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get Jim. I'm gonna cut you off just for a second and say, Jim, you were shaking your head, yes. Um, to respond a little bit to what Clyde was saying. I mean, uh, this is an appropriate metric, is that correct? It's an appropriate metric, but it has to be deployed in an appropriate way. You okay. know, to focus just on reducing 30-day readmission without improving the quality of care, I think, is the wrong-minded outcome, right? So as Dr. Yancey was uh, articulating in the guidelines, there's a very defined list of things that are really focused on optimal care for the patient. You know, and I think that there are places where there's room for improvement. And so optimizing our decongestive care in patients who come in volume overloaded, optimizing post-discharge follow-up, the adjustment of medications with proven mortality right. benefit rather than right. focusing just on diuretics. Right. These are all things that I think we can do better and with the hope that it will improve those metrics in, in parallel. Marielle, you've been, you were actively involved in this too. Your thoughts? Well, I think it's true that it's aimed at reducing costs, but we, we have to be on the side of the patient and say, what's the right thing for our patients? It is very clear from um, telemonitoring studies and other efforts in the past to keep people out of the hospital that sometimes we can keep people living longer by putting them in the hospital, sure, and sure. that's the real issue, is what's going to be the downside of this? Sometimes 
people don't want to be in the hospital, but they don't want to die either. So I think that's what so much of this activity is about. And Clyde's absolutely right. There's a long list that has been published of all of the efforts in the hospitals that they've done to try and reduce readmissions. But there's a very small number of those that have actually been shown to reduce long-term mortality. Clyde, I, I cut you off. Do you agree with uh, these comments? <laughs> no, I completely agree. <laughs> I <know you> did. <clears throat> and I think it points out yet again how careful we have to be with these seemingly high-minded, appropriate interventions or appropriate objectives. We need to subject strategies and ideas to the same rigorous review that we would subject devices and drugs to as well. You know, it's, it, to me, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking all I hear from hospital administrators is, you know, we've got to keep readmissions down, cost, penalties. How do you get, because you, you're going at it the right way. You all are talking what's best for the patient and best for the outcome for the patient and the family. So how do we get these two, because it is about the money, it is about quality ratings. How do we get these merged? How do we get that message out? So one of the first components of any successful readmission reduction program is putting together a multidisciplinary team. You must get buy-in. Everybody's got a stake in this. So the cardiologist, the hospital administrator, the nursing staff, the social work group, everybody has to be at the table. Primary care. Exactly. Yeah, right. Because this Family will only members. get more. <laughs> <members>. <laughs> but it will only get more complex because as we yeah. deal with bundle payments and accountable care organizations, if we don't have a seamlessly integrated system with good communication for all parties, this will continue to be problematic. So, so how do you, um, you know, standing as a, as, as a non-invasive cardiologist, as an echocardiographer, how do, you, how do you make the determination and get the message out that Mrs. Jones, who was discharged 15 days ago, does need to come back and it's not a readmission failure? How do we get that message out? Well, I, th I think that's a challenge. Yeah. And I think uh, what we've done at our own place is, is we, and, and this is probably what is the future, is algorithms of care with checklists and, and determinants of, of the kind of patient that needs to come directly into the hospital. So are they hypotensive? Are yeah. they not oxygenating well? Do they have a new arrhythmia? The good news is, is that electronic medical records, which we're all turning to, have the capability of, of rapid access of past information and is, is really going to set up sort of a decision support for us so that we, we can quickly make a determination. Right. Yeah. If they have these, the patient goes directly into the hospital and you have to do what you have to do. You know, at great points. Jim, you mentioned you said and the family. And obviously, yeah. I mean, if people are lucky enough to have a caregiver with them or a concerned family member, but that teaching the patient and the family yeah. how, to, how to call for help and get help when needed is appropriate. No question. Education is critically important, okay. right? And that's not only the patient, but also the family. And it's an iterative process. I think that, you know, all of us have had the experience where you sit with a patient for an extended period of time at hospital discharge, but they're just so overwhelmed Absolutely. that the week later when you see them in the office, it's as if they're learning these things for the first time. Um, so education, not just about self-care, but also about their medications. We have them bring their medications to the MGH Heart Center when they come for their first visit to make sure that they're actually taking the right, correct medications. Right, right. Um, understanding weights. Um, understanding, even for those more sophisticated patients, the nuances of heart failure care, why they're taking the specific drugs they are, why we're targeting doses rather than blood pressure, why we're focusing on things like biomarkers to, you know, assess their risk. Absolutely. These are all things that I think are really important. Right. It's, it, I'm going to let you finish, but it, it sounds to me like you're really saying what's best for the patient and not looking at the... At the <coughs> the 30-day readmission is, is a failure. If, if coming in is best, that's best. Clyde, I'm sorry, I cut you off twice. I'm going to do it a third time. <laughs> that's sorry. You're probably doing the right thing there. But there's one other dimension that we can't overlook because when we talk about unforeseen consequences, it turns out that two disquieting observations have come to light. One, those centers that take care of a larger percent of economically challenged patients mm -hmm. have a bigger problem with this. Mm -hmm. And so to mm -hmm. what Jim was speaking, which is spot on correct, the kinds of services that will have to be deployed for that particular patient group are things that some of us have never conceived. Right. Absolutely. So that's a big issue. The other thing is that our safety net hospitals 
are uniquely at risk for these penalties. For them to suffer the penalty and not have the working Excellent capital point. to fulfill the mission is really troublesome. So, so we've got a lot of issues, right. and 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 uh, hopefully the the um, you know the the guidelines and everything that you all are working on are going to help. But I think getting the message out, I think, is really important to educate your non-heart failure uh, physician and nurse practitioner colleagues about you know because as I was saying, we hear. 30-day readmissions, bad, 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 we got to do everything, but, but you've made a good point to do all the right things for the patient. So, great point. So, I'll let you f finish. Well, I, I, I think this is something that everybody has heard, because if you're part of a hospital, this is on the radar screen, because it's not just heart failure. It's myocardial it's infarction, right? it's pneumonia, Bypass. and it is forcing us to look around outside the hospital and say, who are our real partners in taking care of patients? So. As painful as it is, it is painful medicine, but to do the right thing for patients, we are forced to, to, to look at, at all of our partners in, it, for the sake of our patients. I th you know, it's a critical, critical issue, and I think you have to get the message out to the consumers. They, you know, one of the things I think we in medicine have never done is really tell people what we're trying to do, why we're trying to do it for them. Jim, final comments? It's all about good care for patients. Not every rehospitalization is preventable, and that's not a bad thing. I think that you know it's important to emphasize that rehospitalization is necessary to improve heart failure care. There's a substantial percentage of rehospitalizations that have nothing to do with heart failure that we get penalized sure, for, sure. and that brings to the fore the need to look at a patient in a more multidisciplinary way and uh, re-examine how we do things, not only before the hospital, also in the hospital and after the hospital to improve that care. There is one last thing to point out. Good things have happened because of this. We now have teams in hospital right. that are focused on streamlining care and trying to optimize the best possible outcome. And if we can continue to keep the patient in the center of this, it may turn out to be a very beneficial strategy. Excellent, excellent points. Well, I've learned a lot from you all. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for joining us. And we hope you'll stay tuned because we'll have more for you shortly.